coverage of the economic crisis. Joining me this morning is Farnoosh Tarabi, a senior correspondent for thestreet.com. Paula Kalajuri, a psychologist and director of the Center for Human Resources Strategy, and Mike Paul, a PR and media consultant. Thanks for having the easy name there, Mike Paul. You win. Uh, <laughs> guys, uh, it, it's a good question. I, I'm hoping that you were able to hear what some of our emailers and our Facebook uh, friends have been saying to us in response to our email question this morning about, you know, the job that we're doing. Um, Michael, begin with you. Uh, sure. What do you think? H how do we do our jobs and, and not depress everybody? Well, look, uh, the media is not only about reporting the news, it's also a business. And one of the things that we know is that fear works. It's the reason why fear is used in political campaigns. It's the reason why uh, fear is used in ad campaigns. And quite frankly, it gets our attention. That doesn't mean that it's happening in the entire country and it affects everybody. For example, one of your reporters said that 1% of America is out of work. That is a high number historically, but that still means that 99% of the people in this country have jobs. But wait, the and unemployment rate is 8.1%. Say that again, I'm sorry? Unemployment rate is 8.1% right now. Yes, so if it's 8.1%, like, well, we're still talking about 92%. Agreed, but you can either lean towards the number being 8.1, or you can lean towards the number being 21.9. Uh, and, and talk about those that still have jobs. Talk about those small businesses that are still doing well. Talk about those large businesses that are still doing well. Okay. Talk about those that are in the stock market that also still have money in it. All right, Paula, what do you think about this? Sure. Heidi, it's, it's not the media alone that is creating the anxiety and the fears. Um, it's also the combination of very salient personal experiences. So you could be saying the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, but when we walk outside and a piece of the sky falls on our head, <laughs> we start to listen to those messages a little more clearly. So yeah, it hurts when that yeah, happens. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I mean, we're talking that's about... really what's creating part of the anxiety. Okay, well, we're talking about 401Ks because we hear a lot about that every day. We are listening to our viewers, and we do read those comments uh, very frequently here. Uh, let me ask you, Farnoosh, what's your assessment of the job we've been doing? Well, I think I'd have to agree with the what with your reader who said uh, I give the journalists a B. You know, Heidi, really, to be a true journalist, it's not just running a business, but you have to service your readers and your audience. Uh, fear mongering, yes, that that grabs your readers' attention, but yeah, at the end of the day, what value? Panic mongering was panic the one that, uh, that one of the emailers said. Yeah, right. Th that doesn't service your journalists. You have to provide what is happening, and what is happening is both awful and great. There are stories, heroic stories, of people triumphing in this market. Guess what? Our savings rate is up 5%, the most in 14 years. And we are talking about money in an intimate way. And of course, now because the economy is suffering, we're talking about money. But guess what? I think that when this economy improves, we are going to see a paradigm shift. And our dialogue about money will continue. And that's a very healthy thing. And so I... Go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, one of the things that we need to have is we need to have more tips as to what they should be doing. For example, should people be buying more food versus going out? Mm -hmm. Or should they be? Should they feel pressure to go out and help those small restaurants and businesses in their community? Should yes, they be investing in stocks right now, or should they be putting more money into savings? There's a lot of mixed messages out there, and they need more help. Well, people can't watch everything. I mean, we know that, but, but they certainly can go about doing their research. In fact, we've had a couple of good stories. Mike, take a look at this. Well, after an eight-month layoff, I've started in the last couple of weeks a contract position. It feels good to have a regular routine again. We are lending money, and on behalf of my colleagues around the country, they're lending money as well. Uh, a lot of people very optimistic that at least, at least Wall Street is still capable of responding to good news. And I know the other night on Larry King Live, uh, Rachel Ray was there, and uh, she was talking about buying up all that chicken when it's on sale, putting it in the freezer, and uh, becoming sort of your own uh, frozen food market, if you will. Uh, Paula, tell me, what can we do better? What can the media do better? Yeah. I think it would be helpful if we could start providing some diagnostics to allow people to evaluate the situation. For example, yes, unemployment is high, 8.1%. But you know what? 91.9% .9 of us have jobs, and many of those jobs are very stable. So it would be extremely helpful for the media to start helping us self-diagnose whether our jobs are at risk or not. Okay. And uh, Farnoosh, I'll give you the last word here. Well, I just think that 
it is the responsibility of Americans to diversify where they're getting their news. If you're just watching one news station or you're just getting information from one newspaper, Great you're not point. doing yourself a service. You have to, you know, reach out and, and inform yourself. We have to, if anything we're learning right now is we have to take the initiative. We have to have self-accountability and we can't wait for the news to come to us. We have to go out there and get that information. Pa Mike, I, I lied. You can have the last word now. Well, one of the things that I think that we need to do is take the pressure off of President Obama. He did say that the buck stops with him, but bottom line is the economy is dealing with things within the business sector, and the business sector needs to have more of a voice. The internal messages, for example, you just saw from Citigroup's chairman in getting an email that should only have gone to employees, but he made sure that the world read it actually yeah, but, impacted the market. But he is the guy in charge right now. He is the guy who is pushing for, you know, these uh, economic recovery packages and we're talking about billions and billions and billions, hundreds of billions Yes, of but dollars. the accountability might be with him, but the impact and the decisions are still made by the CEOs and the C-suite in this country and abroad. And people on their own personal responsibility as Amen. well. Boy, uh, we certainly appreciate the time, guys. Uh, Farnoosh Tarabi, Paula Kalajuri, and Mike Paul. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Glad to be here. Another